What's going on YouTube? Ichi here. We're back with some more Ninja Gaiden. Super Nintendo. 1990. Ninja Gaiden 2. Rather. And we're just picking up where we left off. We're on... Fool! And we're trying to... Uh, save Irene. From uh, Ashtar. She was just kidnapped. And yeah, we're just picking up. Uh, we're, we're going to the tower? Oh, I forgot. Those called. But the difficulty starts to ramp up towards the fourth act. And upwards, because, you know, it goes up to seven. So they really turn it up towards the fourth one. Like, the game only does that. It has this weird difficulty curve. Or, I mean, the series, rather. Because the first game did that, too. Where they, they just turned it up. At a certain act. So. It's a little faster topping. Yeah, I get some health. Because, like, these stages are, are like endurance runs, you know? Like, you gotta try to come up with as much health as you can. And they captured that very well in the, in the Sigma series. Like, that's how I'm, I'm very impressed by uh, Team Ninja and for, like, being able to carry this essence of, uh, you know, game direction and just the overall feel of it to a 3D derivative. Like, it's very good the way they did it. And they kept all the cool elements, like the wall climbing and, you know, the, the flying bird flip is, like, one of my favorite, like, techniques that Ryu does. Like, it's so cool. This dude flips vertical up the wall, like, it's so cool. Like, they, they make Ryu look like a super badass ninja. Which he is, he is a super badass ninja. But they do a really good job of, like, capturing that in the Sigma series. That's the upward point ability. Oh, hey, there's a bat, yeah, he's a bat now. These boomerangs, shurikens are cool because if you don't co uh, collect it, it just hovers around you for a little bit. So you gotta keep jumping over it. Oh damn. Tripped over the finish line. Yeah. This game is cool. Probably put up the... I gotta play the third one. Because, um... There's a bunch of games I gotta catch up on. I gotta finish Mario RPG, the original. I've been slacking on that. Cause the new one came out. And I'm like, damn, I got <laughs> I'm like, damn, I gotta finish the old one. So there's that. And then there's um you know, there's, there's some games that I've I just like stop. And like I kinda don't like to leave loose ends and Leave things unfinished, like that's just my personality. So I gotta go back and you know, do that. Damn, these little fuckers. And birds and birds and birds. That's what I mean, they start ramping up the difficulty. So that that final boss run is ridiculous. They they have you fight three bosses back to back. No break, no help, no nothing. And if you die, you gotta do it all over. That's crazy. And if it feels like an exploit to beat him, then it wouldn't be so bad, but... Well, you guys let me know, because you, you guys probably know about the exploits for bosses. I try to figure them out as I play. But you, you guys probably know. Better than me. I didn't see an exploit for the last boss. Just the same crap you did for the uh, first game. And it's like, like, Jack Yale's like the worst boss. He just flies around just shooting projectiles. It's so annoying. Because I remember that from the first game. Like, It's like, really? You're just going to keep flying around and you got to chase this bastard? So annoying. Oh, I'm gonna die. Okay. I thought I was gonna die there. 
these freaking flames? You got, like, really? We got, like, hovering homemade flames now? And birds, and, like, oh, God. You know, you get hit by a bird, that's death. Especially over a ledge. Like, damn. Bastard. Oh, damn, Jack Lantern. Uh, what games am I looking forward to? Well, they got a couple of cool games that are coming out. They got a uh, what's it called? Slave Zero. It's like it's like a mix between like a fighting game and an action adventure game, which I think is cool. Like, the main character kind of looks like Hakumen from, uh, Blaze Blue. But he's like a Red Devil version. Like, he, he's a mix of, like, Makarva from, uh, Inverth Undernight. And a mix of Hakumen from, uh, Blaze Blue. Like, he looks pretty cool. And, it, like, they mix in, like, fighting inputs and fighting game controls in a 2D plane. But it's, like, 3D-ish mix. It's like a fighting game inspired action game. It looks pretty cool. That comes out, I think, next year, February. This boss wasn't bad. And then, uh, I'll pick up after. What is he after? What does he want? Hear me, ninja. Ashtar. Come out and fight. Or the girl gets it. Don't do it, Ryu. They'll kill you. <laughs> you don't got no faith in me, babe? <laughs> Show yourself. Or you're too much of a coward. <laughs> Beam. Irene. I'll save you. Ryu's design looks cooler. Well, it's more detailed, rather. Fight! Um, what else was there? Uh, Tomb Raider comes out, the Tomb Raider collection. I think that's cool. Because, you know, I, I grew up during that era of, like, Super Nintendo, PS1, you know, that kind of, kind of, uh, genre, console genre. And Tomb Raider, I remember playing that when I was younger. I remember they had a thing where you can trap the butler in the, in the kitchen, <laughs> in the freezer. Cause in the first one, what is the first one? I can't remember. But there, there's a butler that will follow you around, and you can trap his ass in the freezer. He's mad annoying. <laughs> I used to do that in all younger. The game was was cool though. I wasn't good at it. Cause you know, when you're a kid, like you're not good at games. Like, <laughs> because the the game had real good controls of like flipping and acrobatics in the first Tomb Raider. Cause like I had it on a um, on an emulator, and I tried like a little bit of it like some years ago, and I was like, oh shoot, like this game kind of kind of this junk this junk kind of um, kind of smexy. Like it, it it got something there, it got some got some cool essence to it. So they got a remaster of that coming out of the first three games for the PlayStation One. So that's cool. Also, like, you can toggle between the graphics, so you can go back to the pixelated, and then go to the new, uh, newer looking model. So I think that's very cool. And funny enough, they put it, they want to put it out on Valentine's Day. Okay. Hey, <laughs> okay. But you know, Laura Cross is supposed to be this, like, sexy bombshell. It's like, Laura Cross. <laughs> the Croft. Laura Cross. She was always supposed to be that kind of, like, sexy, mature, like, classy ladies, you know, but now, like, they've been, especially with the modern games of, like, from Crystal Dynamics, they've been trying to, like, you know, they, they're kind of trying to get rid of her sex appeal, and they, they, they kind of more push that feminist agenda, you know, like, they try to cover up the hot girls and make them look plain and ugly, it's like, jeez, believe that's what they be trying to do. 
fucking hot, bro. Like, man, ugly. Cause hell, they even doing that with this new uh, Tomb Raider. Um, they got a show on Netflix. Hey, don't get me started on Netflix, but they got a show on Netflix coming out. And the Laura Cross design looks kind of like bland and ugly. Like there's no sex appeal at all. Like the, her design looking mad frumpy. Like you, you guys see it too. Cause like Spider Man Two with Mary Jane, she looking all frumpy. And ugly, because she's based on an actual girl. Self-insert. And, uh, hell, even Resident Evil 3 Remake. Because Resident Evil 3 Remake get, like, a bunch of heat. Because it's kind of like, you know, they, they kind of cut content from the game. And then they change Jill's design. And, you know, they try to get rid of her sex appeal as well. To the one who releases darkness with immortal blood, he shall receive the power of the almighty evil. The legend shall come true. This earth shall fall into shadow, and demons shall rule forever. <laughs> I'll get you, Ashtar. That's cool. Nice stage. It was gonna have a nice stage in the video game. Ice, 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 ice. What was I talking about? Oh, Resident Evil 3. Yeah, and, and Jill, like, they even, they had uh, her prequel design. And, uh, for like a DLC costume or a pre-order costume and like she's supposed to wear a skirt but they made it into like a skirt and like they've been doing that lately like they try to get rid of all these like sexy details and trying to like keep I guess keep pervert gamers from you know being creeps so they'll give women like skirts like short uh, shorts and skirts rather than just a plain skirt like y'all tripping it's like if they bought the game, who gives a fuck what they do with it? If they want to be creeps and in, in their own private time, let them. It's like damn, they used to do that back in the day. They didn't care as long as you bought the game. Cause like Samurai Maiden had that problem. That game that came out, it wasn't a popular game, but it was a Japanese game that got. Cause when they localized the games from Japan, the Western companies be censoring them. Cause, uh, hell, even, uh, I think the Yakuza games are suffering from that, too. Where they're getting censored and, like, localizers are messing up the translations. But, like, if they bought the game, who gives a fuck? They want to be a creep, let them be a creep. They not hurt nobody. They pay for the game. What's the problem? Because same thing with Resident Evil 4 remake with Ashley. People, uh, people trying to defend them censoring Ashley. They're like, oh... I just want to be perverse and look at her dress. It's like, no, it's not about that. It's, it's just about the fact that they're willing to go that far to censor shit. It's like... Because even throughout the remake of Resident Evil 4, like, they, they, they censored mass stuff and they kind of pushed this feminist agenda. Hell, Ashley even saves you like three times. Ashley saves you three times. Like, bro. In the first, in like the original... You're supposed to be this super badass agent, and she's supposed to be the damsel in distress. Like, that's the whole point of the game. But the remake, nope, she gotta save you. I'm like, that's that, that's that feminist bullshit they always gotta sneak into video games. And then they make an Ada, Ada, Ada more uh, relevant and prevalent. Hell, you got, like, Ada comes out and saves you, and she's standing, like, uh, shoulder to shoulder with you against, um... Sadler. It's like you were supposed to save her. It's like damn, men can't just be men no more, and men just can't help and save women and protect women no more. Like women gotta stand on their own. Like which is fine. Like you know, I'm not no mis I'm not no misogynist. <laughs> like that's fine. 
but it's like, bro, like, we're tired of seeing that in movies and video games. Like, we want to see men just be men. Like, damn. Like, like the market is oversaturated with this feminist woke BS. Show yourself, Ashtar. At last, the foolish little ninja is ready to fight. Yeah. Take the girl. She's no use to for me. Irene. Irene. And take that. Yeah, he caught you rocking. Ah. For you. Irene. Dad, yeah, really caught you lacking. Free you! Dad, yeah, what kind of game is this? <laughs> Dad, girl? <laughs> Slow down. Yeah. Irene! <laughs> Irene, don't die! Thought I got the blood of the blade. <laughs> See how the sword of chaos trembles with delight? Dad, yeah, he was showing up with the gun. Oh no. They got Irene. I don't really have a gun. <laughs> Sword of blasting everybody, goddamn. Back off! You bother some swine? I'll deal with you later. Robert, take care of Irene. This is personal. Ashtar! So, your inner power is beginning to show itself, eh? But you know, you can never touch me with a sword so filled with hatred. Cool. Enough of your games, Ashtar. This is between you and me. You dated to battle with Ashtar? Foolish ninja. I'll show you just how powerless you really are. Oh, we fight him right now? Oh, shit. But he's not bad. As long as you got a clone up, you can, like, you kind of snub him out. But you just gotta be aware. Yeah, you got that clone up, and you're good to go. So you're not too bad. Talking about again? Oh, because like I don't like I don't want this to be no like political crap, like because you know it's too divisive, you know. But like this this push for feminism like is everywhere, everywhere movies, commercials, video games, uh, policies is everywhere. It's like damn women, like like don't y'all got enough? Like, like, what are y'all fighting for? Like, y'all got everything. Like, enough. God, yeah. Uh, the force of darkness shall soon awaken. No one will be able to stop it. Let's go. Join forces. Shadows. Oh, chaos. Swallow this wood and turn to a dark bird. What the hell? Act six. Irene, are you alright? For you, there's an altar up ahead somewhere. You must destroy it. I can't leave you here. I'll be alright. You're the only one who can do it. The only one who can stop them. Go! Hurry! Alright. I'll go. Hurry. I'll come back for you as soon as I can. 
Hold on. They're like, back then, simp it was okay. Because the women were worth it. Robert, take care of Irene. Get her out of here. Be, be careful. You too, friend. <laughs> Are you their friends now? Take care of her. Cool. Alright, see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Peace.